Hey y'all, thank you for joining me for another What's for Dinner. I'm starting off the week with a meal that my dad made. So we have a pot roast with some potatoes, carrots, and celery. Also some cornbread muffins and some fresh corn off of the cob. This roast was perfectly tender, perfectly seasoned. He always cooks his in the oven with one of those McCormick spice packets that comes with an oven bag. And let me tell you, it's the best. Okay, so here I'm making some homemade Hot Pockets using my favorite two ingredient dough that I've shared quite a few times on this channel. I've done bagels with it, pizza dough, and now this. I did double the recipe, so to my mixing bowl, I've added in two cups of self-rising flour, two cups of plain Greek yogurt, and then a good pinch of salt. And I'm just gonna stir that to combine, and then I'm going to dump it out onto a piece of parchment paper. You could, of course, just do this out on your countertop. I know a lot of people do that, and that's perfectly fine, but for for some reason it just kind of weirds me out i don't know why i'm like this but anyways i'm not gonna lie this dough is a pain in the butt to work with because it is pretty sticky um, but just keep some flour on standby um, you're gonna need quite a bit of it to get this to the consistency that you want it um, this is super messy it's gonna be all over your clothes all over your house but i promise it is worth it so I'm just going to keep folding it and kneading it until it is workable. I am going to be making four of these Hot Pockets. So I'm going to need eight little sections of this dough rolled out into like a rectangle. And so of course, flour your surface really well. Also flour your rolling pin really well. Um, towards the end of this, the dough started to stick to it. Pretty aggravating, but my advice, just roll with it and try not to get frustrated. it is time to assemble these what i'm using for hours is some pepperoni and some salami as well as some monterey jack cheese there is so many different variations that you could do with these and i plan on trying several different ones in the near future um, but obviously feel free to use whatever your family prefers this is just what i had on hand in my fridge so once i got the fillings all added i'm just going to take a top piece of dough and just add that on the top and um, I'm just folding over the sides, pinching it all together to make sure that everything is all sealed up so that when it goes to cook, all that cheese is not going to come oozing out. Um, so I am going to cook these in my air fryer. I'm just spraying my basket with some olive oil spray. And I've also made a little egg wash, just one egg beaten with a little bit of water. And I am just brushing that onto it, adding it to my air fryer, and I'm doing the same thing to the other side. Um, if you don't have an air fryer, that's perfectly fine fine you can do these in the oven the recipe that i have linked down below in the description box will have the instructions for that but i'm just going to pop that basket in and cook it at 370 degrees for 10 minutes flip it over and let it go for another 10 minutes so here is what it will look like once it is done i just served it with some roasted broccoli the same recipe that i shared in my last what's for dinner i just toss it in some olive oil and sprinkle on some of this garlic ranch and chive seasoning i am obsessed so i am going to cut into this for you guys just to kind of show you what to expect um super hot obviously i kept burning myself but um it doesn't look like anything special but i'm telling you guys this was so delicious i highly recommend it um, and the reason that i love this dough so much like not only does it taste great and have a great texture it will keep you full for so long because of that greek yogurt and it is a great way to get some extra protein into your kiddos next i tried a recipe that i have been eyeing on pinterest for a while now and it is called crack chicken and rice soup so for the ingredients you are going to need some chicken i'm just using a rotisserie chicken five dollars from walmart i removed the skin removed it from the bones and shredded it up this is a great time saver for you busy people i also cooked and chopped up some bacon you'll need some ranch seasoning a can of cheddar cheese soup i chopped up some carrots and celery you will need some white long grain rice and um, i ran out of chicken broth so i improvised with some water and and a couple of these chicken bouillon cubes but that is it that's all that you will need i'm just going to throw all of this into my dutch oven and let it cook until that rice is fully cooked <music>
just took about 30 to 35 minutes to get those veggies tender and to get the rice fully cooked, but it was a winner, winner chicken dinner. So good. My kids absolutely love this. They both asked for seconds. I just topped my bowl with a little bit of parsley, um, but the leftovers were just as good and they thickened up a lot. So I feel like you could even like throw it in a casserole dish, maybe top it with some cheese and pop it in the oven. And that would be a great way to use up these leftovers. Next, I am making some barbecue ribs. So I just have a family pack of the boneless pork country style ribs and I am just placing those into the bottom of my crock pot. And then I'm going to season these up. I'm using some garlic sea salt. I'm generously sprinkling that on followed by some black pepper. And then I decided to add in a little bit of smoked paprika just for a little extra something something. And then I'm gonna take some Dr. Pepper and just pour that over the top until they are almost covered. And then I'm going to place my lid on and cook these on low. I did start these before I went to work. They should really only cook for about seven hours, but by the time I got home, these cooked for more like 10 to 11 hours. And then I had to turn off the crock pot and it was a few hours before I had the time to finish these off in the oven. But now I'm just taking two forks and carefully removing those to a wire rack that has been placed over a foil lined cookie sheet. For the barbecue sauce, the one that I'm using is this peach whiskey one by the Pioneer Woman. That's the only one that I had on hand. And I'm just taking a spoon and spreading that over top of each rib. You could, of course, use a brush to spread these on better. That's normally what I do, but honestly, mine was dirty and I didn't feel like washing it. So here we are. Um, so I'm just spreading that out and that's going to go in my oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. You're supposed to take them out, flip them over, put more sauce on and let it go for another 10 minutes minutes, but I just skipped that step. To go along with these, I also made my favorite version of mashed potatoes. These are like the restaurant style garlic parmesan ones. So I just have some red potatoes that I left the skins on. I cooked those until they were tender and then drained the water, added them to a mixing bowl, and then seasoned them with some salt, black pepper, and some garlic powder. I also tossed in some butter, followed by a splash of milk, and I also used some sour cream. Then I'm going to whip out a block of Parmesan cheese, and I'm just going to grate that over the top. Use as little or as much as you want. I won't judge if you have a cheese mountain. <laughs> but then I'm just going to whip out my electric mixer and whip those until they get to the consistency that we like. And here we are. These are amazing. You guys have to try these if you haven't before. They are delicious. Um, I was pretty disappointed in these ribs. Um, I've tried this recipe before and loved it. Um, but as you could probably guess, they were overcooked. So they dried out. And I wasn't crazy about that barbecue sauce on these. I should have just stuck to some Sweet Baby Ray's. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> I did try these filled peas and snaps for the first time. It's just I heated them up out of a can. And they were already seasoned, but they were really good. For the last dinner idea, I'm going to be grilling out. I'm really trying to get used to my charcoal grill. So I want to try to grill out like once a week, but we will see. So here I'm just prepping some jalapeno poppers. Um, I am cutting down the stems, slicing those down the middle lengthwise, and then taking a spoon and just scraping out the middle. I had never had jalapeno poppers before I made these. I had never even bought jalapenos before. So I had no idea what to expect. So this was adventurous in my book. Um, this was pretty time consuming so I would recommend like if you had some downtime to go ahead and prep these beforehand and just pop those in the fridge until you are ready to pop them on the grill. So now for the filling I have half a block of room temperature cream cheese. I'm adding in some shredded sharp cheddar cheese and some garlic powder. You could use fresh green onions or be like me and just use some freeze-dried chives but then I'm just going to mix that together and stuff these peppers. <music> And I'm not stopping there. I am going to be wrapping these in some bacon. So I just use one piece of bacon per jalapeno pepper. Um, you do want to make sure that that cheese is fully covered so that when you go to grill them, the cheese doesn't all fall out. I'm also going to be grilling some burgers. I just got the pre-padded out ones this time to cut down on time and I am going to be seasoning those with some garlic salt and pepper. So I just need to start a cooking at night series because it is always dark outside by the time I get around to this. 
But anyways, I'm just adding those jalapeno poppers to the grill. I try to put them like away from the flames to reduce flare ups and to try to prevent it from burning. So as you'll see here in a little bit, I did end up eventually like rearranging it like all the way around the edges of the grill like in a circle. Um, but I did cook these for about 10 minutes. When my 10 minute timer went off, that's when I added the burgers to the grill. So I had already seasoned one side and I placed those seasoned side down and then I just seasoned the other side. And when I was done with that, that's when I flipped over all of these jalapeno poppers so that the other side could get crispy. And I believe I had to let those cook with the lid on, of course, for about 15 to 20 more minutes to get the bacon to the way that we like it. And I really don't remember the time on these burgers. I want to say maybe 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, I'm just flipping them over here and letting those finish. So here is how those jalapeno poppers turned out. They turned out so much better than what I expected. I did get the bottoms a little bit burnt, but that's just extra flavor, right? And then on the side, I have some of this Lay's ranch dip that I dipped the peppers in. And then I also had a few ruffles on the side. And look at how gorgeous this cheeseburger is. I put it on a brioche bun with some mayo, mustard, cheese, and pickles. This was probably my favorite meal of the week. But that's going to wrap up another video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.